What is going on everybody? My name is Japes. Welcome to another FIFA 14 gameplay commentary. Today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of head-to-head -head versus Mr. Al Reed. Now, for those of you guys that don't know who Al is, I will leave his Twitter down in the description of this video. He is an employee at EA. He works, uh, you know, doing stuff with the community. So he was there at the event with us. He offered me a game I accepted. And of course, I waited to see which team he was going to pick first because I like, you know, when it's head-to-head -head versus a friend, and it's always fun to kind of pick maybe a rivalry match or someone within the same league, uh, a matchup that you could see being of great importance in that league during the season. So he went ahead and he picked Juventus. So I thought, okay, Serie A, my options, I've got Milan. I'd already played with Milan. So I thought, hmm, other big Serie A, I should have gone Napoli. That would have been a good shout, but I wanted to try Inter out for me. Inter Milan has been a team that has been out of FIFA relevance since maybe... I don't know, gosh, when they had Edo, they were relevant definitely when they had Ibrahimovic, but for a while now, they just have not been a team that you see many people using on FIFA games. Uh, and I thought, hey, let's give them a shot this year. They've got a few new signings I know of, or I think they have a few new signings, so I thought we'll try them out, give them a shot, see exactly how it's going to play out. So I was really unfamiliar with their lineup, and I'm sure many of you guys will kind of know this feeling when you first get the game, some of the teams you don't really know. At this point, I was loving the 4-1-3-2 formation. I was kind of disappointed that the formation was not in, and that guy, Mateo Kovacic, is unbelievable on this game. He is an unbelievable central midfielder. But the 4-1-3-2 was a formation that I was having quite a bit of success with. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and play this. And I thought, you know, I know Inner's going to have Kamiyasu. He's a brilliant center defensive mid, so that'll be good. But I ended up not playing him, which was weird. Uh, I decided I wanted Freddy Guarin as my CDM in this formation uh, and Kovacic as my more center mid slash center attacking mid. You know, if the if ultimate team had a 4-1-3-2 formation, hopefully that'll get added in next year. That would be fantastic. It's very similar to the 4-1-2-1-2, obviously, because you have your CDM. You're just having a CM inst or a CIM instead of your CM. But for me, that actually kind of makes a big difference the way the formation plays out. Now, Al is going to be using a 3-5-2 formation with Inter Milan, or with uh, Juventus, which is obviously very good. They've got three outstanding center backs, maybe even four if you count, uh, I think, count Benucci. But you've got Barzagli, Chiellini, and Agbana. If you put Benucci in there, then they've got four unbelievable center backs, as well as a super stacked midfield with Pirlo. Uh, Vidal, who is unbelievable in this game as well, and uh, Paul Pogba. And then their attack sometimes can leave you wanting a little bit more, uh, but maybe not in real life because Fernando Llorente is actually quite a good player. So on we go into the match. This game, you can see it's only 10 minutes long, so it's a little bit different uh, than my other gameplays. I decided just to so show the highlights in this one. Let me know if you prefer this style or if you prefer seeing the entire match. Sometimes I think the whole match is nice because you get a real feel for the game. Other times it's nice just to see the highlights because, you know, 20 minutes is a long time to watch uh, one game of FIFA. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the game. Oh, I forgot they had uh, Carlos Tevez. So Inter does have quite a nice, uh, or uh, Juventus does have quite a nice attack as well. But I'm going to touch briefly on the demo. I've been asking, I asked you guys this morning, I said, guys, what are your thoughts on the demo so far? Been out for 24 hours now. Let me know kind of what you think about the, about the game. Now, I saw a couple things like, oh my gosh, Japes, finesse shots are so OP, and we've touched on that before. I've come out and said in multiple videos, as well as on Twitter, that EA know, knew of the problem by the end of the event that we were at, and they were doing stuff to fix it, so... That's really not something that you, should, you guys should be worried about. Now, a lot of people were like, the touches, oh my word, the touches, it's terrible. And that's because you have to play FIFA 14 differently than you play FIFA 13. In 14, you cannot just hold down sprint at all times and then use the left trigger to save yourself. Now, I was definitely guilty of doing this in 13. It's one of those things that I guess I kind of took for granted uh, as how easy it was. But if you think about it in real football, in real life, a player going 90 miles per hour, obviously not 90 miles per hour, but for the sake of this example, 90 miles per hour on a sprint and then just instantly changing directions, it just never happens. So... They're also not going to be able to keep control, except for maybe your world elite players. You know, your Ronaldo, your Messi. Then if you're sprinting, you'll be able to keep control. I'm going to upload a video on one of the uh, 
the skill games that actually kind of made the learning curve a little bit better for me with dribbling. So if you guys are struggling that when the first game drops and comes out, maybe in early release or whatnot, have a play at some of the skill games. It really actually does help this year uh, with the learning curve between 13 and 14. And this game, you know, I was talking to one of my buddies and he said, this game for anybody that's played, you know, quite a bit of real football in real life, they are going to love this game because it feels the pace of the game feels very much uh, more realistic. And I would agree with that for the most part. Now, some people said, you know what, the game feels kind of clunky. Uh, that's just because of the way the touches now work in the sprinting. And a lot of people commented and realized it and said, hey, you actually have to play, do a lot more build-up play this year, which is fantastic. Uh, but it also can be frustrating because you'll do all this build-up play, you'll get a shot, and then you won't score. And you're like, oh my god, am I ever going to score? This is starting to get ridiculous, just like the scoreline in this game. Sorry, Al, but this game had to be posted. And it's largely because of this sequence and this goal right here. You're going to see Nagatomo out uh, wide. Nagatomo was a left mid. This is Kovacic. Uh, just a fantastic player. 19-year-old Croatian. I was very unfamiliar with him until playing this game. Lovely little scissor kick there from Melito to put it away after a nod back from Palacio. Uh, and I was unfamiliar with him. But he's definitely a player I'm going to be looking to pick up on Ultimate Team. Just a joy to use in head-to-head. -head. And I can only imagine that with the way stats get boosted in Ultimate Team, he will be even even better. So I touched on it before too. Serie A, definitely a league to look out for, I think, in Ultimate Team this year. A lot of quality players uh, in that league. Nice little over the top ball. Ricky Alvarez had to try it. I had to try it. You know, sometimes you just got to do your best to put it away. Uh, but a lot of your concerns that you guys had with the demo are things that I think EA have already addressed. You know, some people said corners are so broken, so overpowered. I know EA had mentioned something along the lines of, yep, we're taking a look at that as well, and we'll do our best to make sure that's sorted. That little chip shot right there from Nagatomo, if I charged it up just a little bit more, it probably would have made its way into the goal. But that is a very rewarding goal to score in FIFA when you actually chip the keeper like that because it's a very realistic goal. You see that happen uh, maybe not quite frequently, but when it does happen, you know, it's a it's a joy to watch in real life as well. And so getting one of those in on FIFA is just fantastic. So you can see we're up 3-0 at the break. Always nice to stick one to EA staff members uh, when it comes to a game of FIFA and say, hey, hey, I know that you've had the game for a while, but we can still we can still hold our own, us YouTubers, us normal guys out there playing the game. Uh, and I don't think EA ever would doubt that for a second either. You can see two shots for him, nine shots for me, seven on target. Uh, possession sometimes can be a little bit difficult to keep in this game. Uh, usually, if you guys are new to my channel, I try to keep around 60% possession. That's kind of my number. And you can see I go check out Kovacic uh, right here looking at his stats. And I was just like, man, this guy is kind of just a monster. Only 18 years old. Are you kidding me? Uh, and so I've, I was kind of pumped to discover that because if I do a career mode series this year, guess who I'm going to be going after? That man right there. Uh, but Inter, as a whole, their team is just very well-rounded. Uh, Melito's still an 83 striker. He's got fantastic finishing. Palacio is a very clever little player uh, up front. And then on the wings, I used Nagatomo, who's been moved up to a left mid, uh, because Inter's default formation, much like Juventus, is a three-back formation with three center backs. And then their outside, quote-unquote, outside backs are actually considered to be mids, uh, even though they have more defensive uh, responsibilities. It's kind of the way the Serie A plays out. Uh, but I used Nagatomo as a left mid, very pacey player, uh, got forward, got back with no problem. I'm using uh, Jonathan, I think, as my right back. And I can't remember who my other left back is. I don't know why it's uh, slipped my mind at this point in time. But as a whole, just a very, very well-rounded unit. Uh, not many glaring weaknesses. They've got Juan Jesus, who is in my 25 best players under that 85 rating. I found him to be an exceptionally strong center back. I know some people have said he just kind of stands there and watches in the beta, and he just really wasn't that stellar. For me, he was all over the place. Fantastic in a three-back on ultimate team. Fantastic in a two-back on head-to-head. -head. Uh, so he's definitely a player that I would look out for if I were you. And of course, Inter has Freddy Guarin as well, who for many FIFAs now has some is one of the most well-rounded midfielders in the game. And when I say well-rounded, uh, we've got Pereira out as our left back. And that's just a nice little passing move as well. Nagatomo sliding in free. If only his finishing wasn't terrible, but when you knock it across to Melito and a diving header fail. Um, 
But uh, Guarin, for many FIFAs now, is just one of the most well-rounded midfielders with at least his ultimate team card. Just about every stat he has is around 80, uh, which means that you can put him just about anywhere you want. He will be fantastic for you. Anyways, guys, that is how we're going to close out this video. I hope you did enjoy this head-to-head -head gameplay. Inter Milan versus Juventus. Kind of sticking one to the EA staff for you guys. Uh, but if you guys did enjoy it, a like or thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. Make sure to click subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out on any of my FIFA 14 con content. Let me know about your thoughts in the demo in the comment section down below. Other than that, my name is Japes and I will catch you all next time.